The Lamentations of Jeremiah, Chapter 3 I am the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has led me and brought me into darkness, but not into light. Surely against me as he turned, he turns his hand against me all the day. My flesh and my skin has made he made old. He has broken my bones. He has built against me, encompassed me with gall and travail. He has set me in dark places, as they that be dead of old. He has hedged me about, that I cannot get out. He has made my chain heavy. Also when I cry and shout, he shudders out my prayer. He has enclosed my ways with hewn stone. He has made my paths crooked. He was unto me as a bear lying in wait, and as a lion in secret places. He has turned aside my ways and pulled me in pieces. He has made me desolate. He has bent his bow and set me as a mark for the arrow. He has caused the arrows of his quiver to enter into my reins, as I was in desertion to all my people and their song all the day. He has filled me with bitterness. He has made me drunken with wormwood. He has also broken my teeth with gravel stones. He has covered me with ashes and now has removed my soul far from off peace. I forgot prosperity. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul has them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are, ve they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sits alone and keeps silence because he has borne it upon him. He puts his mouth in the dust. If so, be there may be hope. He gives his cheek to him that smites him. He is full of with reproach. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but thou he cause grief. Yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. To crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth, to turn aside the right of a man before the face of Most High, to subvert a man in his cause, the Lord approves not. Who is he that says, and it comes to pass, when the Lord commands it not? Out of the mouth of the Most High proceeds not evil and good? Wherefore does a living man complain, a man for the punishment of his sins? Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us lift up our heart with our hands unto God in the heavens. We have transgressed in every bell. Thou hast not pardoned. Thou hast covered with anger and persecuted us. Thou hast slain. Thou hast not pitied. Thou hast covered itself with a cloud that our prayer should not pass through. Thou hast made us as the off scoring and refused refuse in the midst of the people. All of our enemies have opened their mouths against us. Fear and a snare has come upon us. Desolation and destruction. Mine eye runs down the rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. My eye tickles, trickles down and cease not without any intermission. Till the Lord look down and behold from heaven, mine eye afflicts mine heart because of all the daughters of my city. My enemies chase me score, sore like a bird without cause. They have cut off my life in the dungeon and cut a stone upon me. Waters flowed over my head. Then I said, I am cut off. I called upon my name, O Lord, out of the low dungeon. Thou hast heard my voice, hid not thine ear and my breathing at my cry. Thou drew near in the day that I called upon thee. Thou said, Fear not. O Lord, thou hast pleaded the causes of my soul. Thou hast redeemed my life. O Lord, thou hast seen my wrong. Judge thou my case. Thou hast seen all the vengeance and all their imaginations against me. Thou hast heard their reproach, O Lord, and all their imaginations against me. The lips of those that rose up against me and their device against me all the day. Behold, they're sitting down and they're rising up. 
I am their music. Render unto them a recompense, O Lord, according to the work of their hands. Give them sorrow of heart, thy curse unto them. Persecute and destroy them in anger from under the heavens of the Lord. Chapter 4 How is the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street. The precious son of Zion, comparable to fine gold, how are they esteemed as earthen pitchers, the work of the hands of the potter? Even the sea monsters draw out the breast. They give suck to their young ones. The daughter of my people has become cruel, like the ostrich in the wilderness. The tongues of the suckling children cleave to the roof of his mouth for thirst. The young children ask bread, and no man breaks it unto them. They that did feed delicately and desolate in the streets... They were brought up in the scarlet embraced dung hills. For the punishment of the iniquity of thy daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sin of Sodom. That was overthrown as in a moment, and no hand stayed on her. Her Nazarites were purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than, than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. Their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaves to their bones. It is withered. It has become like a stick. They that be slain with the sword are better than they that are slain with hunger. For these pine away, stricken through for want of the fruits of the field. The hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children. They were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. The Lord has accomplished his fury. He has poured out his fierce anger and has kindled a fire in Zion, and it has devoured the foundations thereof. The kings of the earth and all the inhabitants of the world would not have believed that the adversary of the enemy should have entered into the gates of Jerusalem. For the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests that have shed the blood of the just in the midst of her, they have wandered as blind men in the streets. They have polluted themselves with blood so that men could not touch their garments. They cry unto them, Depart ye, it is unclean, depart, depart, touch not. When they fled away and wandered, then said among the heathen, They shall no more sojourn there. The anger of the Lord has divided them, he will no more regard them. They respected not the persons of the priests, they favored not the elders. As for us, our eyes have yet failed for our vain help. In our watching we have watched for a nation that could not save us. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled, for our end is come. Our persecutors are swifter than eagles of the heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord, was taken in their pits, of whom we said, Under this shadow we shall live among the heathen. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom that dwells in the land of us, the cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken, and shalt make thyself naked. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished. The daughters of Zion, he will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity. O God, daughters of Edom, he will discover thy sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love you with all my heart. In your loving name I pray. Amen.